Hello everyone, this is Chad Van Fleet from the MathWorks and today I'll be talking about the MATLAB link for Petrel. So looking at the agenda, we'll be talking about an overview, how to get the MATLAB link for Petrel. Then I'll dive into some of the mechanics, importing, exporting, working with points, lines, surfaces, grids, wells, logs, seismic data. And then I'll also give you some resources that you can follow up with. Connect the visualization power of Petrel with the analytics powers of MATLAB. The MATLAB support package for Petrel allows you to seamlessly move data to and from Petrel, making it easier to leverage the strengths of both applications. Using the MATLAB support package for Petrel, you can directly read and write data between a Petrel project and MATLAB. You can also perform Petrel operations from within MATLAB. This capability facilitates an integrated workflow which removes the need to manually exchange data between the two environments. You can get the MATLAB support package from Petrel from the link below. You can also find the MATLAB support package for Petrel by entering MATLAB and Petrel in Google. The first hit will take you to the page. Fill out some information about your contact info and then it will direct you to the download the executables. Once you download the support package for Petrel and install it, you will then be able to see it installed in your MATLAB. Here it is. In this case, I'm using uh, MATLAB R2015A. Other versions are also available from R14 up to R15B. You can find the help for the support package Petrel in the help section of the doc under supplemental software support package for Petrel. Here you'll find information about all the functions available. There's a few of those. And then release notes. And what we'll actually be covering today is looking at some of the examples. I will also be using Petrel 2014 for this demonstration. Petrel 2013 is also available. After installing the plugin, if you go to Options Plugin Manager. You should see the MATLAB plugin installed with my contact info. Now let's look at importing and exporting data using the support package for Petrel. Here I have an example project uh, for the Gulf X. It has surface data in it. Let's take a look at that. So here's an example surface. By selecting Export Object, and choosing the MATLAB MAT format, you can now export data directly to MATLAB. Over in MATLAB, you see the surface data here. You can load that. It contains a node structure that has all the information about the surface, the XYZ coordinates. You can plot that. And here's that same data in MATLAB. Now let's go back to Petrel. Here I'm going to look at one of the properties of this base Cretaceous surface type, the depth property. Properties can also be imported and exported. Again, I'm going to select the mat file format. Over in MATLAB, we can see the surface property here. I can load it. Again, it is a structure, but this time it has different fields. This one has the value field because it is a property. I can do some simple processing on it. Here I'm going to truncate part of the surface. I can then save that data to a new mat file. Back in Petrel, I can import that data I just saved by clicking Import on the main object selecting this mat file. And now I have a new element in the Petrel tree that I can render. So this is the part of the surface that was truncated. See that here? It is also possible to import uh, on top of an existing property if you just want to update it. It's the same process. You just select Import On and select your property. Now let's look at the grid data type. 
the sample project has grid data in it. It has faults, horizons, If you wish, you can export that. Back in MATLAB, you'll see the grid.mat was created. We can load that. This particular type has XYZ geometry data. It also has fault data, horizon, and zone data. Um, if you're familiar with the Eclipse format in Petrel, um, this is equivalent to that data, except it's 30% smaller and it's already in the MAT format, so it can be directly loaded by MATLAB. Just to give a comparison, I exported the, the same grid into the clips type in Petrel. The file is actually too big to load in some editors, so I have a truncated view here, but this is an ASCII format. And in order to load this file in MATLAB or some other tool, you'd have to write a parsing function to read this file. Whereas the MAT format, the data has already been formatted. All the data has been pulled in as doubles. Missing data has already been converted to not a numbers. The data is ready to go. Switching gears, now let's look at working with point sets, polylines, and surface types. I can open an example project that is actually shipped with the MATLAB support package for Petrel. This sample project contains well log data as well as seismic. So let's look at the uh, example for the point set type. This example shows some of the functions that are provided by the support package. By running this Petrel add folder function, I can actually programmatically add a new folder to an existing project. So in Petrel, we can now see now there's a points folder. It's created by MATLAB. I can synthesize new data using the Petrel make point set function. Here you can see the data. I can then add that data to Petrel using the Petrel add node function, giving it a name point one. I can then add a window programmatically. I can then show the value of that node in Petrel. So here's that data in Petrel. Properties, both continuous and discrete, are supported. So let's create a uh, continuous property. Again, I can add that property to the point set. I can also make a discrete property. In this case, I'm just quantizing the continuous property. Again, I can add it. And now you'll see that this point set has a continuous and discrete property. Now let's look at lines. The same APIs can be used for building polyline types. So here I create a lines folder. I create a polyline set. I can then add that node, add a new window, and show the data in Petrel. Again, properties are supported for this type. So I can add a continuous property and a discrete property as well. And you see that represented in Petrel over here. Surfaces are another supported type. I 
can make a surface. I can then add it to the patrol tree, add a window, and show it. Again, properties are supported. Here I'll create a continuous property, add it to the node, and then a discrete property. And again, add it to patrol. And you can see those here. Now let's look at working with grid types in Patrol. In this example, we're going to synthesize a grid type. Can add a folder. A grid in MATLAB is actually a stack of surfaces. We can generate those. This grid type also supports adding faults, horizons, and zones. Here I'll add no faults. I'll add five horizons. And I'll assign zones based on those horizons. Once that's defined, I can add the node. Over in Patrol, we'll see the new grids folder created. And underneath there, we see grid one complete with horizons, faults, and zones. I can also assign a property to that grid. Here I'm going to create a continuous property. Again, it's a stack of surfaces. And add it to Patrol. Also make a discrete property. Add that to Patrol. And now we see the, the grid realized here. Can turn off some of the zone filters to see your data. The next thing I want to show is working with well log data. The sample project shipped with the MATLAB support package Patrel has well log data in it. In particular, I want to look at the porosity data inside these well logs. Here's one. Let's say you want to actually do some automated processing on this well log data. Let's look at the well example. Here I'm going to use a different function, the patrol find node function, for locating all the porosity data in the wells folder. Once I locate that data, I can actually plot it. Here I'm going to synthesize a new well from that data, make a new well node, make a new well log, to attach to the well, create a new folder, add the well node, add the well log to the well, and then show the results in Patrol. So here now are all the well log, the porosity measurements displayed in Patrol, including the new well, this one in the middle, um, that was synthesized using MATLAB numerics. The final feature I want to show is working with seismic data. The sample project also has seismic data in it. You can see some of that here. Let's look at the seismic cube example. Here I can retrieve the data from Patrella using the get node function.
because this seismic cube is a lot of data, it actually takes some amount of time to retrieve the data. But here it is. So for small seismic cubes, it might be practical to load the entire, um, entire cube into memory. However, the support package also provides a mechanism for accessing seismic cube that is too large to fit into memory. That uses the Petrel seismic cube data store object. You can point it to a data store, in this case the same cube I had before. But creating this object does not load all the data into memory at once. Instead, it allows you to slice it in arbitrary fashion incrementally such that you don't have to load the entire cube into memory. In this example, I took tiles out of the seismic cube. I can then take that subset of data or the sub volume, do numeric processing on it, and then use that calculation and then throw away the seismic data when I'm done. Seismic interpretation and other types of processing can take advantage of this seismic cube data store. That concludes the demonstration portion of this webinar. You can contact Alan Price or Andrew Willard for trials of MATLAB. And you can contact me for information or questions about the MATLAB support package for Petrel.